Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm doing a series, I'm taking isolated vocals and I'm doing a tutorial, analysis, and I'm talking about the recording process of how these amazing pieces were done. Uh, next up is Anthony Kiedis. Uh, of course, you guys know the band. Uh, first of all, the song is called Under the Bridge and it's Red Hot Chili Peppers. But before we get started, if you don't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'd be super awesome. Uh, I have a singing course. It's called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com where I have a free singing forum with over 20,000 people in there. If you guys are interested, wanting to learn how to sing, that would be the place to go. So before we get started, though um, I have a slogan and a phrase and the phrase is a singer is only a singer because they have the guts to be one now there's all kinds of shades of singing and I'm not here to diss anybody singing or say someone's better than someone else because that's subjective to what you like okay but I will say that in Anthony's case I don't think Anthony would consider himself to be the greatest singer I think he'd consider himself to be a really great storyteller and more of a vibe singer he's got a really interesting vibe about him. And the Chili Peppers are really a very unusual band with some amazingly talented musicians in the band. So, man, some of the best drumming on planet Earth, some of the best fleas, one of the best bass players ever. Like, you know, just some of the, the incredible you know, musicianship behind the band. So I just want to dive right in. We'll start first with the vocals and then we'll start to add on to the conversation. Okay, let's do this. Here we go. Sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Now, Let's be honest, if you were down on the beach, walking on the boardwalk, and some guy had an acoustic and went, sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner, <laughs> right? Got a little pitchy, not, you know, a little inst inst unstable in this walk, whatever. you probably just walk right by, right? Let's be honest about this. Now, at least unless you had a, you know, you're only wearing a sock, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, then you would probably just kind of go, ah, shmeh, right? But it's, it's the collective of the chili peppers that made, and the lyrics and whatnot, and, and the vibe and, you know, the phrasing, the grooves and everything else that goes with the band. But let's be really honest, and candid, if you heard this, sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. You'd say, huh, it's Jack Johnson in training or something, right? I don't know. Um, and this is actually before Jack, uh, way back. But um, I say that because I want you guys to know a singer is only a singer. And we could talk about a lot of singers from David Bowie on down, even Mick Jagger to a certain extent, where I don't think they think of themselves as great singers. They have a really great artistry that they bring to the table and a great vibe and great storytelling and, you know, they, uh, their character on and off stage. But I wouldn't say this is the greatest singing, but there's a spooky, engaging vibe about it. You're kind of like, oh, wow, it's it's quirky and kitschy. And it's it's enough to where you go, hey, what is that, right? That's kind of what we think of when we th I think of when I think of this. Sometimes I feel like my only friend is the city I is the city. There's not even any, any it should be, is the city of angels. But then you say, well, Ken, that's too exact. If you sang it like that or if you did this song, you'd probably sound kind of stupid. And you're right. I probably would. It's so him that you know, Kiedis does, he does his own vibe the way he does it, and that's it. So, let's continue. Live in the city of angels, lonely as I am. Yeah, lonely, that's really flat, right? Am together we cry. It's like he's doing everything he can to just try to get as close to pitch as he possibly can and still be himself and his vibe, right? That's really important to point out, guys, because again, a singer's only a singer because they have the guts to be one. Uh, and they go in different stages of learning how to get better and better and better at their craft. A really good example of a lot of this, and you guys are not gonna like me for saying this, but I have to say it. If you listen to early Madonna stuff and you go, Holiday, and like some of the songs are like, Oh my gosh, you know, really? I can't believe that became popular. And then you saw her work on her craft. And you know who else is, is two other singers that are like that? Lady Gaga, her earlier stuff, nowhere's near the singer she's become. Pink, her earlier stuff, nowhere's near the singer she's become. So we all work on this stuff, folks. Don't think that it's just some God-given thing. Yes, there's God-given talent, and there are Aretha Franklins, and even Aretha had to work on her stuff, or Whitney Houston, or whomever. Um, 
Steve Perry, whoever, Freddie Mercury, whoever your flavor of the month guy is or girl is. But um, so it kind of starts at one point. By the way, I have an Ed Sheeran thing. If you go to my website, I have a, I literally have a video. It's called A Singer is Only a Singer because they have the guts to be one. It says, can anyone learn to sing? I'll put that in the description so you can check out the video I put together on that because it'll really make sense to you as you're going through the process of this. And I cover all this in my singing course. Let's continue. Here we go. I drive on the streets cause she's my companion I walk through the hills cause she knows who I am She sees my good deeds and she kisses the deeds and Like that word and isn't even in, 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 the, in a key, right? However, one more interesting thing about this If they had auto-tuned this, it just wouldn't be the same because it's the it's it's the the pitchiness of it or the detunedness of it that gives you kind of a, a creepy, uneasy kind of vibe that makes the song. I know that sounds weird, but it really is. It's it's the fact that it isn't in perfect pitch and it and it is kind of uh, um really just like kind of the guy next door just you know singing kind of a creepy song or i don't want to use the word creepy but really emotive kind of song that gives it that effect and i i suspect that if you really auto tune the crap out of this it wouldn't have anywhere near the tension that we hear in it as it's going by straight up windy, never worry, now that is a so pitchy right but look how many records it sold and look how many people liked it Pretty interesting, right? I don't ever wanna feel like I did that day. I take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. I don't ever wanna. I don't, wanna, I don't ever wanna feel like I did that day. Take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. We well, you know what the lyrics, bad lyrics. Sorry, but but you hear it's it's just vibe. The whole thing is vibe. It's not even about singing. I think that's pretty interesting. It gives hope for you and me, right? <laughs> Wanna feel, feel like I did that day. Take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's like, he's not even like trying to find anything really creative note-wise, though the chorus is catchy. Da -da 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 -ba -ba. Right, a little Bob Marley kind of vibe going on, it's right, right? Um, but the other thing too that's also kind of cool is you've got this band, and I'm gonna tell you, man, the band is just monstrously, gosh, to have that kind of band and then have that in the front is really weird because here you have this crazy technical drummer, crazy technical bass player, phenomenal talent in the back playing loosey-goosey reggae kind of vibes so you get kind of a weird sense that you have musicianship playing in a genre that most that genre itself isn't about musicianship with a singer that's not about singing it's about the vibe right so everybody's bringing into this collective about this whole thing being a vibe piece and and it worked Crazy stuff, but it's the truth, man. Check it out. It's hard to believe that there's nobody out there. It's hard to believe that I'm all alone. Now, while you're hearing someone, whenever whoever did this vocal stem, they actually plopped in the bass. I don't know if that's exactly where the bass hits. It sounds like it might because um, the bass is on the back, like a boom. Eh, on the on the one end of, of a groove, uh, kind of like a reggae be a beat would be, but it's competing so hard with the vocal, it's hard to get past this part of where they have the vocal stem. But so I, what I wanted to do is I wanna go back to the top of this, and I wanna show you how this sounds with the band, because the band itself, the way he's singing, he's not singing like in the groove, he's singing kind of playing to his own drum, haha, <laughs> so to speak, as he's doing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the band in itself, and then you listen to both of these together and you'll see what I mean. Check it out. Sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Sometimes I feel like my only friend see what I mean? is the city I live in, the city of angels. Lonely as I am, together we cry. See, it's very inexact. I think that's really interesting. Let's continue. I drive on the streets cause she's my companion. I walk 
Now you hear it start to lock a little bit more when the drums come in, but when the guitar and the vocals are just kind of like really loosey goosey and just kind of all over the road, and it locks a little bit more as it goes and locks more as it gets in the chorus. Check it out. She sees my good deeds and she kisses me windy. And I never worry now that is a lie. Now I want to point out out about the guitar. Like that's a jazz chord, it's a major seven, right? What's interesting about that also is, is that he's playing these blues licks that are kind of like Hendrix, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan a little bit, you know, because of these blues licks in a reggae style. And you guys probably wouldn't pick up on this and maybe you don't care if you're just here for singing. But I think that's really interesting because I want to go back and play just the instrumentation for a minute. And I want you to listen to the guitar parts. The guitar parts are mm, ja, mm, check it, mm, ja, mm, check it, mm, ja, mm, check it, mm. Though they do do that in the chorus, that's not what he's doing in the verse. So I'm going to back up just a little bit of this so you can hear it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute the vocal. Now check out the rhythm of this. <laughs> And then when you add the vocal to that, it's the vocal is kind of on the reggae side, but the guitar and the groove is pretty tight, playing some kind of technical um, blues rhythm things. So the, the 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 rhythm groove of the guitar is not super simple stuff. It's not hard, but like I said, it's like Hendrix, you know, Red House, or you know, some other thing kind of sped up a little bit. It's different, you know. She knows who I am. She sees my good deeds and she kisses me when kind of busy. And I never worry, now that is a lie. Right? And then you don't notice how out of pitch that vocal is. All you're getting is the vibe of it and a little bit of the tension when it does go out of pitch it forces you back into his story. Like you're kind of mesmerized and locked back into his story because of the pitchiness of it. I kid you not, straight up. That's how I see it. Let's continue. If I were to go back here and let's just get rid of the drums for a minute, and if I were to sing this to you with only the vocal and I went, Salo, uh, uh, take uh, me uh, all the way. Uh, uh, I don't ever uh, wanna uh, feel uh, 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 like I. You would go, oh wow, the syncopation of that doesn't even really work until you think of someone clapping like, I don't wanna, uh, uh, wanna be. How am I did that? Da -da 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 -da. That one and, kind of like an oompa, um, is the bass part as a reggae feel that you're hearing going through that really locks it in when the drum and the grooves are there, it glues it all together. I think that's fascinating personally, but um, then again, as I'm, I'm, I come from a musician standpoint, not just a singer standpoint to show you guys. someone put that bass part in that we talked about that was just kind of mumbo jumbo and you couldn't really quite make it up. Now I want to go back to the top of the song and I want you to notice how sparse it is because again, how I get these vocal stems, sometimes they have a lot of effect on them, sometimes they don't have hardly any effect, any effect at all. This is one of those examples. If it were me mixing the song, I wouldn't add all the effect I'm about to put on it right now to show you, but I also want to show you how it gets sparse, spru uh, spruce this up a little bit. So all I really did was create two rooms a long, a bigger room, kind of like the one I'm in, or really kind of like my control room here, or I mean my vocal booth room here. Um, and then I put a really small bright room and a small bit of a delay. And what I also did was I set up my pre-delays. So one of the delay pre-delays is about 40 milliseconds. So it goes, it goes, and it's pretty, 
uh, 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 uh. there's a lot of pre-delay to it, but the room is really short. So it feels like it's hitting kind of like a racquetball court wall a little bit so that it's not too overwhelming for the track. So check it out. I'm gonna mute the original vocal and the one that I created that has the effect on it. And you're gonna see how much bigger it sounds in the track. I'll just go back and forth between them. You can check it out on your own. Check this out. Sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Sometimes I feel like my own friend is the city I live in, the city of angels. Lonely as I am, together we cry. Now you can tell it's a much bigger sound. Now you say, Ken, that's too much for that. You're probably right. As far as just having only a guitar, now I'm not gonna change a thing. I'm not gonna add any effects or take any away. But when the band kicks in, you can't notice it as much except for the fact that it sounds more expensive. It sounds, you know, just like a bigger, more beautiful vocal. Check it out. I'll do it without the vocal or without the effect first when the band's playing and I'll go back and forth so you can hear it. Check it out. Here we go. I drive on the streets cause she's my companion. When I walk through the hills cause she knows who I am. She sees my good deeds and she kisses me when I never worry now that is a lie. Now on the one hand having no effect creates a lot more intimacy, which is really cool. But if you notice when the band actually kicks in even harder, you'll notice the effect even less, but it sits in the track and it thickens up the track even more. So we'll do one without it. Here we go. I don't ever wanna feel without. Like I did With. that day. I take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. I don't ever wanna feel like I did without. that day. I take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course, effects in this context also cover up some of the pitchiness in the uh, intonation, attenuation, intonation problem. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that and definitely check out my next video.